Welcome to Worship Leader Hangout, where we talk about many aspects of leading worship and leading a worship team. Today, we're going to talk about the structure of an audition. Yes. Auditions are huge. Well, let me tell you why. Sometimes you might audition somebody, you might hear them sing or hear them play and, and just be excited because that one thing you heard them sing or that one thing you heard them play, it was awesome, yep. right? Well, they've practiced that, especially for an audition. So maybe later on the line, you say, hey, sing this harmony part or sing this, you know, and, and you don't really know a lot about their vocals or a lot about their skill and they disappoint you big time because yep. they, they can't sing harmony. They can't play, you know, different lead parts. It's huge to make sure you audition well, so that way you know that you're bringing on somebody that can handle different situations. Yeah, all right. I'm gonna be talking about how to do vocal auditions, and Chad's gonna be talking about how to do band auditions. And when I do vocal auditions, I have them sing a song, and there are some things that I, I'm listening for. I'm listening for intonation, all right? And that's whether or not they're sharp or they're flat. Yeah. And that, you know, if the intonation is really bad, then I really know that this person has a lot of work to work on. If the intonation is not all horrible, I mean, the, quite frankly, uh, the greatest singers have intonation problems or sharper flat problems. And so uh, if the intonation is not bad, I don't worry about it. Um, another thing I listen for is tone. That has to do with the way they're singing, the sound coming out of their mouth. Is that sound harsh or is it nice and clear and clean? Um, something else I'm listening for are the embellishments that they use in uh, their performance. Are they doing a lot of runs in their music? Are, they, are the runs uh, minimal, but they're nice and clean? That lets me know whether or not this person is able to sing with a group. So if a person, somebody's doing too much embellishments, mm -hmm. I know that this person is gonna have trouble singing harmony with uh, group members because they're, they're, gonna al they're gonna always wanna embellish the music. All right. right. So I'm listening for a control sound, whether or not they're controlled or not. Um, something else I do in the vocal auditions is we do pitch matching. Yeah. All right. That's good. And it's I Got play I play on the piano one note and I have them sing that notes back to me and, and then I play a series of notes and I have them sing those notes back to me. Another thing I do is we f try to find the vocal range. A lot of people, uh, they come to an audition and they don't know what part they sing. They don't know if they're alto, soprano, or tenor. So I help them find their range. And then um, the final thing I do is I w sing a song and I have them sing harmony to that song. And just to figure out if this person has an ear for finding um, harmony. And then I have them sing a harmony that I give them to sing. So whether or not they're able to sing something back that's given to them and hold the part that they were given while somebody sings something else. And so those are some things that I do to hold a vocal audition. So yeah. what do you do for band auditions? So for band auditions, first you want to start with a song that they need to, to have learned and, and ready for the audition. So right now we currently use Fullness by Elevation. And what I'll do is I'll give them the song and say hey I want you to learn fullness whatever their whatever their instrument is and I you know whether you use tracks or not you just you have them play their part for that song even if it's with the actual CD itself yeah you can have them play with that and just kind of dial it down um, or you can just let them play uh, but the thing is is having a, a song that they can go and learn that you know well and then now they know well to hear them play that back and, and hear how they they work within that song uh, another thing I do is I let them play for a couple minutes just by themselves and I, I see what they come up with because what you're what you're gonna see there is can they improv well because yeah. if they can improv well you'll hear them you know kind of playing different solos and and things like that but if they can't you'll be able to tell whether that's you know a specific song or not for the majority of the time but yeah. that gives you a way to see their their versatility and and what they can do uh, in the future with your team and can they improv can they play you know if you decide to go somewhere else during the worship service maybe even a different song can they pick up on that another thing you can do in your audition that can be important to to finding the right person is play the piano with them and see if they can follow along with you and learn the song if they don't know it uh, learn the song right away and, and play by ear Mm -hmm. um, or play the guitar and let them follow along with you, especially bass players, because yeah. you might go somewhere different and you might need to know, can this bass player follow along? Uh, maybe even the same thing with drummers. As you start to get more intense with your playing, uh, do they, do they you know, crescendo with you? 
Yeah. Do they, as you soften up, do they soften as well? You know, that's important, especially in church music, because there's a lot of times where we are, our dynamic level is, is going, you know, up and down and we need to make sure our musicians are, are there for us. Another huge piece of an audition is the interview. Ask questions about them, their personal life, their spiritual life, where they see themselves and how they fit in, into your worship team. Uh, and also uh, just let them talk, let them tell how they come to know Jesus or whatever your other requirements and also make Maybe even let them ask questions about the church, about you as a leader. Let them know the vision of the church and the mission and, and where you're headed uh, as a body. Uh, it's, it's really important because there may be things that they might not agree with yeah. personally. And if they get they get on the team, uh, they may not uh, want to be there much longer because they, they might not agree with the church or where the church is headed. And also, there may be a few things you might need to let them in on. Like, oh yeah, we're this is kind of where we're moving toward. This is the style that we normally do. This this is so there's a lot of little things that are going to help you determine if this person is definitely going to be a good fit for your team yeah if somebody just isn't quite to the level that you're looking for don't be afraid to bring them on as a red shirt and let them learn let them be a part of your rehearsals and and let them sing and play, but not necessarily play on Sunday. And then eventually they're going to be quality to be able to play and sing on, on Sunday. Yeah, it's important to know. And I think I take this quote from Craig Rochelle when he says, great teams mm -hmm. aren't discovered, they're created. Yeah. And so um, a lot of worship leaders are in situations where they don't have the, the, the talent pool to pull from. And so you have to uh, develop that talent within your church. You never want to to push somebody away because they're not quite to that level. Yeah. It, 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 it's Remember, funny, like, you, were, you were there. Yeah, you point. were, you were. And I was able to, to play saxophone when, <laughs> and I'm not really a, a horn player anymore, but I was able to play saxophone when I was in, in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade in the, the orchestra that we had at the church at the time. And I wasn't that great, but they allowed me to be a part of it because they, they saw potential in me. They saw that I wanted, I just wanted to be a part of the worship team and I knew I was called to lead worship. So, hey, why not? Yeah. yeah, just be a part of the team and whatever fits with your culture, of course, but don't be afraid to, to bring on somebody that isn't quite to that level, but don't let them stay there. That's huge. Yeah. I know that this video has kind of gone a little off of the audition process, but the audition process is there to make sure that you don't get team members that are going to just leave right away and also to get quality team members. Um, uh, that way you don't have a lot of problems later on as far as can they sing this, can they play this. It's and also just to help you to gauge where is this person in their yeah, musical abilities. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It's not a necessarily, well, your musical abilities are awful, so you're not allowed on our team. No, it's, yeah, it's just no. to gauge where they are. And um, from w when you know where your team members are, then you know how you can best work with them. Yeah. And so, yeah. yeah and you're giving them a chance, and but also be uh, openly communicate, hey, I see you at this level. I want you to be at this level by the time you're playing on Sundays I want to help you get there and yeah. if they want if they really want to be a part of your team then they they will they will understand okay I need to just come to rehearsals for a little while before I can actually sing on Sunday yeah and that's uh and that's a good a good way to bring somebody on sometimes that isn't quite to that level and open communication this if you don't communicate that then they will wonder why am I not being scheduled to sing on Sunday yeah and am I not good enough? Then they'll just eventually face out and feel like, oh yeah, that they all, they only want A players, A musicians, mm -hmm. and speak bad of your team when you're, you're really not in, had that intention in the first place. So. Yeah, no, that's been great. It's important to know that just because a person is not able to nail everything that you want them to do in audition doesn't mean that they can't be a part of your Absolutely. team or a part of one of the music ensembles in your church. You can see where they're great in these set of skills, mm -hmm. you know, and they, they're not that great in these set of skills. And so you can use them for, for different things in your church. So just because they do not nail uh, an audition or every aspect of the audition doesn't mean that, you know, they can't be a part of your team. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. We want you to subscribe so click on this logo right here in the center and you can be updated on uh, future content that we put out and then click on one of these other videos on the screen we want you to uh, watch more of our videos and and just learn because remember we we know that great worship leaders are always learning right yep <laughs>